What is going on, everybody? My name is Michael Levan. Thank you for joining me today. So I did put in a few different surveys and a few different, you know, requests to see what people wanted in the second series after we got done with the Python series, which just wrapped up last week. So survey is in, and we are going to jump into Golang. So if you're not familiar with Golang, Golang is actually a procedural based programming language. It's not object oriented. It's not functional base. It doesn't have classes and things like that. So what it's going to do is it's actually for like system and low level type of things. That's really what it was made for in the beginning. However, it slowly progressed into what we know of it today. So let's think of a few different languages that were made by Golang or I'm sorry, not languages platforms, technologies. It's pretty early here. So uh, sorry if I fumble a few things. So the first thing is Docker. Docker was written in Go. Kubernetes. Kubernetes was written in Go. I believe GitLab was written in Go as well. So there are obviously a few things. Oh, Terraform. Terraform is written in Go. So like, let's say you're making a Terraform provider or something like that, you would write it in Go. So as you can imagine, there are a bunch of really, really popular tools right now that are being written in Go and super important to learn, I think, in my opinion. So I'm definitely not an expert in it. I'm definitely still learning it myself, but we're going to go on the journey together. And the first video here where we're going to take a look at is how to set up our environment. So let's go ahead and jump into that. So the first thing that we're going to look at for our environment specifically is how to install Golang. So this is on Windows 10 right now, but we're going to see how we can install it on Linux, on Mac OS and on Windows 10. And it's pretty much at the same place. So first thing that we're going to do is just type in Golang and you're going to see the Go programming language. You're going to click on this. It's for Golang.org. And obviously the first big button that you're going to see here besides the little picture of the gopher is download go. So for example, and we can even actually see this uh, try go here, which is really awesome. So we can open up the playground and this is actually like, I don't want to say necessarily like an IDE, but it's, you know, kind of how you can test out Golang in the cloud without even having to actually install it, which is obviously very nice. So for instance, we can run this and this is just going to print uh, hello world and we can run this and boom, we can see that the program exited, but it printed out hello world. And this is a function. This is how you import libraries, but we're of course going to go over all of that in this course. So if we go back here, we can see that we can download go and we have a few binary distributions for Linux, Mac OS and Windows. So if I click on this button here, you can obviously see a bunch of different options. So obviously you have a PKG and you have an MSI if you're installing on Mac OS or on Windows. So this is just, you know, click it, download it, and, you know, double click and go through the executable. However, on Linux, you know, you're gonna have this tar file. So you'll be able to do a tar minus XVF, and then you can untar this and, you know, have that binary there for you and go through the installation process. And then depending on the installation process of Linux, uh, it's really going to depend on what operating system, of course, but you have this tar here. So it should be pretty much universal for you. That's the installation process. And I'm not going to go through and click through and next, next, next and stuff like that. Um, it's just like any other installation process. But once you actually have that installed, what will happen is I'm going to open up my terminal here and move it over. And then you can type in go. And of course, you'll have the go cli here that you can use to build your environment to run your go code and all of that. So once you have that, that's really when you have to start thinking about what ID or what script editor you want to use. So the first thing is, of course, good old VS Code. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna open up VS Code here, and uh, we don't have to worry about that or that. But specifically, what we want to worry about is the extensions. So if I go to my extensions here and you type Golang, 
you're going to see this extension here and this is going to be that extension specifically for Golang in VS Code, which you'll have some little bit of a telesense, you'll have your linter, you have your go path, you have all that stuff. Again, you know, we'll talk about that. But this is the, that extension specifically for VS Code. And then there's another IDE that I do want to talk about. It's going to be on JetBrains and go land so if you do like jetbrains products there is something called goland and that's an ide specifically by jetbrains for golang it's literally for golang the one thing that i do want to mention is it is not free so if you do want to you know have goland available you, you could download it you can have the 30-day free trial but at the end of the day you do have to buy it personally uh you know when you're just learning golang and kind of seeing if the language is right for you. Chances are you don't have to buy the JetBrains product. Um, I actually do use Goland. I think it's really cool. I use VS Code as well. I kind of jump back and forth. But just while you're learning, using Visual Studio Code is perfectly fine. And with that, that's going to wrap us up for this week of getting that environment up and running and going through the installation process. Definitely hope this helped. And in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to start to learn about importing libraries and the different ways that you can do that through official libraries and through libraries right in GitHub. Thanks for watching.